NewbieHack.com. We provide a great deal of information on our products and spend a lot of time doing this so you don't have to. In the last video, we made sure that we had the quad buffer set up correctly and connecting to the mark controller. We also did some test communications. In this video, I'm gonna show you the connection that we have with the servo and to the mark controller and also to a, another voltage source. I'm using a standard nine volt battery to power the servo. The servo requires between seven volts and 12 volts and they recommend 9.6 and this is around actually 9.85 new so this should be a perfect voltage source for the servo. You'll see that I have a, a voltage regulator, a low dropout regulator that's used for batteries. I'm not actually using this yet. I will be using it when I when I don't have the the computer plugged into the, the microcontroller. So once I get the microcontroller working the way I want to and communicating with the, the servo, then this will be used to take the nine volts and then bring it to five volts on this side. And what that'll do, it, it'll, it'll allow me to give a source of voltage to the servo and also provide a source of voltage to the microcontroller on this side. This is the Max 603 and you can see how I put this together on my previous videos. Specifically, you can see it right here when you type in max 604 low dropout in the video clip search. Actually, it's a max 603, but it found it anyway. And it says on paper and breadboarding. And I explain exactly how to go through the the connection on the breadboard and with the max three the dropout and how to connect the pins of the of the max 603 the way i connected the servo to the board you can see that there's three lines one is data one is ground and one is vcc or five volts and i connected it to the the breadboard from the three pins here and i have the the ground which is the the pin on the left here and then the middle pin is VCC or five volts. And then the pin on the right here is the data pin, which actually goes to the, the single wire communication pin on the, the quad buffer that we set up from the previous video. This is where all the communication is happening on the single line here. You can see that there's a small jumper at this location showing where the transmit and receive all come together. So let's get into the programming and start communicating with the servo. The program I'm starting out with is essentially the same thing we had before, except I took the communication out of the while loop. Before we get started, we're not really starting in a receiving mode. So I wanted to start by turning the transmit off and receiving on right from the initialization. So I'm gonna take the DX off, RX on, and just put it right after the, the last statement of our initialization code. Let's discuss a little bit about how we need to talk to the digital servo. In UART, you've heard me talk about data frame. And the data frame consists of a few parameters, uh, such as parity, uh, how many stop bits, the start bit, and the actual data itself. But that's only one byte of data. We need to send out packets. You haven't really heard me talk about packets yet, but packets are essentially just a string or a few of these data frames together to form what is equivalent to a sentence to the digital servo. Just like we are talking to somebody else, we will we'll say a sentence and then we'll stop the sentence at the period or the or whatever punctuation mark at the end and then we'll wait for their response. So let's talk about this sentence that we have to say to the servo to get it to do something. The data that we send to the servo is called the instruction packet. And just like a data frame has a start bit, the packet contains bytes that indicate the start of an incoming packet. And that would be 0xff, 0xff. And this is hex. To write this in binary, would we would write it in binary like 11111111. But it's a lot easier to just write it in hex in this form, ff. And you know f just by itself is just 1111. This is followed by the id of the of the servo which servo you're going to be communicating to and i actually made a mistake in a previous video i said that the broadcast which is talking to all of the servos at once was zero or 255 or something like that and it's actually um 
0xfe. So if you need to broadcast to all the servos, you'd use the hex fe. If I wanted to broadcast to the number one servo or servo with the ID of one, I would use 0x01. If it's number two, I would use 0x02. The next would be length. And this byte would be the length of the parameters or the count of the parameters, the number of parameters, plus two. And the parameters comes after the instruction. So the instruction is next. The instructions would be a ping, a read data, a write data, a reg write or register write, a action, a reset, and a sync write. We'll go through each one of these instructions in more detail later on. But for example, if we were going to use the write data, we would use a 0x03, which is a writing to the register of the digital servo or the, the EEPROM table of the digital servo. And the EEPROM table will be discussed in more detail later on too. But generally you'll have a read and you'll have a write. The 03 would be the write instruction. We're writing to the digital servo and you'll have a read data instruction, which would be a 02. And you're essentially asking the servo to give you a response from its table or, or its status. The next byte in the sentence or the packet would be the parameters. Parameter 0 to parameter n. And then finally you have the checksum byte. And this would equal the inverse of the sum of all of this. It also includes the length and id. So we would sum all of this, and then we would take the inverse of that number, and that would be the checksum. And there are uh, some examples in the data sheet that I'll explain as well. So we know we're getting the, the correct number. The other type of packet that we would have would be the status packet, which is actually the packet that is returned from the digital servo. And this consists of similar information. It starts off with the, the two bytes that indicate the start of the packet. 0xff, 0xff, and then the ID, which is the ID that the status packet is coming from, the length, which is the number of parameters plus two, the error, and this is an error code that, that would be returned if an error exists either in the instruction packet or an error exists within the actual digital servo itself. For instance, an overheating or an overcurrent, over torque situation, you'd get those errors as well. Parameter follows that, the parameters. And then finally the checksum, which is the same thing as the above checksum. It's the, the sum of all of this and taking the inverse of that sum or the inverted number of that sum. So how are we going to send this entire packet over the line all at once? We could just take the, let's see, the transmit UART zero, and then put in zero X FF, and do that again. And then you have, you can put in the ID, which is zero X day zero one. Um, and then go on and on and on and, and until you have all that done. But that would be really expensive when it comes to programming because if you wanted to do uh, many commands to the servos, you'd have to put this, write this all the time. I mean, it would take you a long time to write the code and you'll have thousands of lines of code just to control a servo. Let's go ahead and just complete one just so we can see what is involved. Let's see the length. Let's just put in a, an arbitrary length here. Let's say we have three parameters plus two, that would be five. And the instruction, let's say the instruction is 03 to write. And then we have a few parameters. I'm not sure what those would be. So let's just say DD. We have three of those. And then we have the checksum. And let's just put a fake checksum in here. So this would be an example of, actually I'd have to turn on DX. I'd have to turn on the transmit and then we know that after this last one is done, it automatically turns off the transmit and turns on the RX. So this is what it would take to send a packet to a digital servo. But obviously we don't want to keep writing this type of code over and over again. So we'll make a function, make a function that will transmit a packet to a digital servo. Actually, I'm going to put it on the top because it's, then we won't have to create a prototype. So let's, uh, would we be returning anything? I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to just put void. Let's see. Let's see, transmit packet to servo. 
Not sure if we're gonna have any parameters yet. Let's just take this in, uh, as an example, put it right into this function here. First off, we already don't know what we're gonna be, what ID we're gonna send out. So we can go ahead and make that an ID here. We'll make that an unsigned car. And we'll say ID. So we'll take that ID and put it right here. I think we'll also want to specify the instruction as well. Let's, let's do the unsigned cars for the instruction. So then we'll just take this instruction. We'll put it inside here. Wait, that's for length. So let's put that in here. This is going to be the length. I think we won't know how to get the length yet, but we'll figure it out once we get the parameters in. With the parameters, I'm not going to bring it in as a as an actual parameter in the parameters. Uh, I'll make a global parameter set. So I'm going to take the unsigned unsigned car and I'm going to create a a variable called parameter set, but I'm going to make it an array because we don't actually know how many parameters we'll have to transmit to the digital servo. And I'll make the capacity for this array, um, I'm going to start off with about 20, just to see what we have for the next few examples. But it shouldn't be, shouldn't be over 20, but we'll see. There will be instances where we can um, transmit multiple commands in one packet. So we may actually go way above 20, but I'm going to keep it at 20 for now and see and just see what happens. I'm thinking I'm going to have to put in the parameter length. So because we actually will have data in this variable from maybe a previous command set and we want to make sure that we have the correct number of parameters or we'll run into some previous commands that were in the the array from from prior execution of commands so we'll need to create a number of parameters so it only uses those parameters in the array because we'll be using this in a in a in a loop to loop through all the parameters and get them transmitted let's go ahead and create a loop right after the instruction actually you know what we have the length as well just because we have the number of parameters we can go ahead and put in number of parameters plus two so we have our length established now we can start on the parameters do a four it should be an automatic way of doing this there we go int i equals zero i is less than the number of parameters then i plus plus this will loop through all of the parameters from zero to the parameter uh, minus one because it's less than so that's one to the number of parameters and now we want to transmit whatever is inside that parameter. Set, then I. Now we need to work on the checksum. I don't want any calculations going on in here because I want these to happen instantaneously one after another, so I'm gonna do a checksum here. Actually, we may need to do that because if we go through a loop here, we might have to add to the checksum here. But up here, we can start on it. So we can go ahead and say this is equal to the ID plus instruction plus the length, which is the parameters plus two. Actually, I'm going to separate this. I don't like the way this is showing up. So I'm just separating it out, separating out length. And we'll put that over here as well. So now I have the length in its own variable and I can be sure that this is going to be the correct value. Can't add any more to that at this point. What I'm going to do here is have the checksum add the parameter set as it goes through the loop. Now the checksum can finally be written out into the packets, but this is incorrect because data sheet is telling us we need the inverted checksum and the tilde is the correct way to get the inverted value or the not value. So we should be done with the transmit. I don't see anything we need to return, so I'm going to maintain this void. For the first example, to see if this works, is we'll transmit an instruction to set a particular digital servo's ID. Of course, we don't have an ID to be able to set an ID for a particular digital servo because we have to add this as a parameter. We will need to add the broadcast ID. So we'll essentially be talking to every digital servo out there. But in this case, we'll only need to have one connected because if we did a broadcast ID and set every 
servo to ID number 01 or 02 or whatever, then that would be a problem. So we, we can only have one digital servo connected at this point since we're trying to set the ID. This is actually the first example they have in their data sheet as well. So let's, we'll go ahead and see if this works with that ID, with that example. We also want this outside of the loop because we don't want to continually run a setting of an ID for a servo. So let's keep it outside. We will use the, the function and the first parameter is the ID and that's going to be 0xfe, which is the broadcast. The instruction is going to be a write instruction. So that's going to be a 0x03. You know what? I'm going to going to make this in a, in a defined statement. And at the, at the beginning, we'll define all of the instruction set. Write instruction it will be 0x03. Since we already talked about the read instruction, we'll put that in here as well. That's 0x02. We'll also put in the, the control table, which is the command set for the digital servo. We'll put that in the defined statement as well, since we'll be using a an instruction or a command to write a new ID for a servo. We'll start with that one. And that's actually 0x03. Don't get that confused with the instructions. Call it digital servo DS ID, digital servo ID. Actually, I'm going to be, I'm going to actually, I'm going to put a little bit more information. I'm going to put the DX, DS, tw you know what? I'm going to put in the actual name of the servo model, the AX12. So the AX12 ID, will I be able to put that in minus? Maybe not. Yeah, good. Okay, so this is the AX12. Um, the AX18 or other types of servos may have a different control table. So this is one way to distinguish between the two. A control table consists of actually 49 or actually 50 different controls. And I'm not going to be putting, I'll be putting these on there one at a time as I go through the examples. So the parameters in this case turn out to be only two parameters. So this number can be a number two. This means the same thing in hex as decimal, so I'll just use the decimal version. And we'll need to create the parameters before we call this function. So let's put in the parameters individually. So the first parameter will be the AX12 ID. Parameter set. Second one will be the actual number that I want the digital servo to be. So that would be 0x01. It would be ID1. Once you set these digital servo IDs, you can write the number on the back of the servo because this essentially becomes a permanent number. It's not permanent in that you can't change it later on, but it's, it is in, in an EEPROM area of the control table, which is non-volatile, meaning that when you turn off the servo and you disconnect power from it, it retains that information. Now, unfortunately, because we're using the broadcast, it's not going to give us a response back because uh, in broadcast instructions, um, if everybody sent a status packet back, uh, it would be very confusing and, and we may get um, a really bad set of data on that TXRX line. So we need to ask that servo to give me the information. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that that servo was correctly assigned the new ID and that we were essentially uh, testing the response anyway. So let's go ahead and ask it to give us a response of what the ID is. Actually, we're not going to do that yet. Well, I'm going to test it with the with the um, the logic analyzer and see if we're getting the correct transmit out. It's better to stay simple at this point and just to make sure we're getting the correct transmission of the packet. And we should be getting something like this: zero x f f. Actually, exactly like this. The 04 would be the length. This is the broadcast ID and the instruction 0x03. 0x03 again because of the, the parameter, which is this first parameter. Then we'll have the 0x01. And then the checksum will be 0xf6. And this is an example in the data sheet, so I know this is correct. So we should see this on the analyzer, the, the logic analyzer, exactly like this. And if we got this, then we know that we have this part of the program correctly coded. Because this is where the checksum is generated. We also have the length generated here from our number of parameters. So let's see, how, see if this works. We have no errors in compiling, so that's good. 
Before we can program the microcontroller, we need to set up the logic analyzer so we can eavesdrop on the communication because right when we program it, the instruction is going to be executed immediately. So as we are programming it, we're going to start this program, the sampling. We're going to receive the samples and we will then program and as we finish programming, we should have the samples analyzed. And we can see if we got the correct packet coming out. So I'm going to connect this one to ground, which is the ground connection. And then I'm going to connect the black wire, which is the first one, to the, the communication, which I have this wire connected to, which is the, the single wire or the one wire UART half duplex line. Okay, I've programmed the microcontroller. I'm going to unplug the programmer, then plug it back in so I can catch that sample. It looks like it got something. Take a look at it. Okay. Like we got something here. Check to see if it is accurate. The checksum should be enough to determine whether this is a correct um, packet. And that's the 0F6, and I remember getting that as well. Yep, 0F6. So it looks like we've got our programming correct, at least for the checksum. Let's check the rest of the numbers. We got the two 0FFs. Check that. 0FF, 0FF. We got the 0FE, which is the broadcast. The broadcast ID, yep, over here. And then we have the 04, check that 04. And the rest of them is 03301, 030301. And then the last one is F6, which is the the checksum in the F6. So it looks like our programming is, is working correctly as we intended it to. So now we can control the digital servo using these three lines. In the next video, I will read data from the digital servo to make sure that this ID was actually set to the servo. I didn't have the servo connected at this particular time, but in the next video I'll connect the servo, I'll connect the 9 volt battery, and we'll monitor the, the line with the logic analyzer to see if we get a response back and it's the correct response. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the newbiehack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.